Good morning, St. Francis friends and family. I'm so glad that you're um, joining us today on Facebook Live. Um, you can also go to our St. Francis YouTube page um, and find our service there as well. I wanted to give a special shout out to all of our seniors this morning. We're so proud of you. Um, I'm at the beach, as you can tell, I'm kind of at the beach and I'm not in my normal church setting. Um, and I hate that I missed your parade, but I love the video and you will see it at the end of this service today too. I'm so proud of all of you and I know that you are going to do great things in life. I also want to remind you um, that we are collecting our kids kits. Um, you can bring those to the church. There's a box out front and you can bring the kids kits by for a common heart to help them make out the kids, you know, the, the kids that come and and collect that food to make them feel a little bit special. We are also continuing our regular food drive. Um, anytime that you wanna bring something by, please do that. I give a shout out to Bruce um, Goral for taking all of those items to Common Heart each week. I also wanna give a shout out to, um, um, to Bella, to Bella Cristaldi for all the masks that she's making. Um, you are help keeping us safe and I, we so appreciate you. I especially appreciate you. And, um, and this week, um, you'll see instructions on um, the website. We'll send it out in an email. We're going to have a scavenger hunt at the church. And so um, you and your family, you could come have a picnic or just come walk our grounds and, and look for all the items. You'll see pictures of all the items for you to find. And um, just something fun to bring people to the church. We're also having our drive-in church this morning. Um, so we're trying all different kinds of ways and experimenting ways to try and stay connected during this crazy time with the COVID. And I hope that you will sit back and take in a little bit of Jesus this morning and that your hearts will be open to hear his word. Um, we are certainly in a time of unrest in our country and it can really, it can be daunting and it can make us feel really down and I don't know, it's just hard. And, um, and so I hope today that you will find a little bit of uplifting and how you can help be an answer in these troubled times. Let's go to God in prayer. Precious and holy God, we give you thanks that we have church and that we have a church family and a body of Christ to connect to and to cling to during troubled times. I pray, Lord, that we would hear your word in truth today, that we would take it into our soul. As we begin this new series about DNA and who we are and whose we are, um, I pray, Lord, that you would speak loudly and strongly to each of us. Be with those who are continuing um, to struggle with COVID and all the healthcare workers that are um, tending to them. I pray for our govern government officials who are trying to make really, really tough decisions. And I especially pray, Lord, that we would be a country that would once again find its way back to being united. Bless this time together. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Jeannie Dugan. I am the director of children and youth at St. Francis. Welcome. Come on down. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about bubbles. Bubbles, they're colorful. They like to float everywhere, all over the place. We can make little ones, big ones. They're fun, aren't they? What I love about bubbles is that whenever you blow bubbles, people really usually like to smile. Now, when I think about bubbles too, it kind of reminds me of God's love. We don't always think about it, but God's love is very colorful. He made us all different colors. He made the world all different colors. So I think that's how he shows his love, by making us all so unique. Also, God's love is everywhere. Like bubbles, it can go everywhere. It can go high and low. It can be itty bitty and big. I like to think of God's love as the the really big ones. But, you know, God's love also, like I said, when bubbles come around and they pop on you, you can't help but smile. 
So I want to encourage you to keep doing God's work. Keep sharing God's love everywhere. Think about ways that you can be sharing God's love and looking around for all the colors that he's made and seeing it as God's love in this world. Will you all close in prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for making us all unique. Thank you for the big family that you have created on this earth. God, may we show your love to everyone around us. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Bye, guys. Well, welcome once again. Um, I'm Andy Condor. I'm the pastor here at St. Francis, and I'm once again glad that you have joined in today. Um, we are starting a new series called DNA, the core of the local church. And there's four areas that we will be looking at over the course of the next four weeks. Um, one being um, vision and mission and values and Holy Spirit. And today we're looking at that mission aspect. It is the core of being a church, a Christian church. What is it that makes us Christian? And in our country today, we see all sorts of things and all sorts of definitions. And sometimes we wonder, I don't even know if this is worth it. And so I thought we'd take a look at what is it at the very center of, of who we are and who we claim to be. And that is for us as a local church and for us as individuals, as we are part of a local church, or if we are looking for a local church, these are some areas that you can look at. How do we live into these core values? What are the stories and what are our behaviors? How do they align with these core values that, that come from scripture? And so today I'll start with our DNA. We all know about DNA. It's just become this huge phenomenon right now. Um, when we were able to, to trace and look at different codes in our DNA, um, it's a blueprint of who we are. It tells us where we're from and where our ancestors came from. I think that's so exciting. Tommy, um, Tommy has done such a great job with our Ancestry.com for his side of the family and my side of the family as well. And we've discovered some really, really cool things. Um, I've always known that I have a Scottish ancestry and um, I kind of live into that. When I was in Scotland, I thought, okay, this is, um, I've got some Scottish in me. And then not too terribly long ago, about four years ago, I discovered that um, I have Iberian Peninsula. Um, ancestry or DNA um, in my blood, in my body, and who I am. And I discovered that my father, as he did research on um, the Iberian Peninsula, that a lot of folks in that area were captured as slaves and they were shipped to North Carolina. How weird is that? And they were shipped here as slaves. But through shipwrecks and that kind of stuff, people were able to escape. And most of the folks were captured again and they became slaves. But the people from the Iberian Peninsula, many of them had, could identify with the Native Americans here in North Carolina. And so they would migrate in with the Native Americans. They're called the Melungeons. And they would migrate in and, and keep from being enslaved. And so they stayed together and they migrated up through North Carolina into the Virginias and even into West Virginia. And that's kind of where I come from. So it's kind of cool. And a lot of it makes sense. That's our physical DNA, our physical blueprint, why we have the eye color that we do or the hair color that we do or the skin tone that we do. And I learned that's why I tan so easy. Being here at the beach, I'm getting a really good tan. Um, but there's also a spiritual DNA. And that's really what I want to focus on today is our spiritual DNA. And we can do a lot of research on spiritual, our spiritual life and, and our connection with God. We can trace it back to when we learned about God or accepted God. Some of us, our spiritual blueprint was, was instilled in us when we were little. Um, when I was little, I was taught the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. And that's where different theologies come in with that spiritual blueprint of what we were taught 
and what we were taught to believe in. And, and some of those things are good and some of those things were not so good at all. And we have to figure out who it is that we want to be in our Christian walk. So to kind of get it started here, first of all, we have to understand that we were created by God, number one. And then from that, we grow and learn that we need to recognize that we are in need of a savior. Ephesians 1 talks about that. Verses three through six talks about being adopted. And when we accept Christ, we're adopted into the kingdom of God. That means that our blueprint changes on our spiritual DNA from maybe not being as strong to being very strong or anywhere in between. It's part of that spiritual journey. But on our blueprint, on our DNA, we were adopted into the kingdom of God. First Peter talks about um, how we are um, born again, that we have this new birth, if you will. And, um, and this new birth comes after that. Um, acceptance of Jesus. And then 2 Corinthians 5, 17, again, it's the same kind of language that we have become a new creation. The old has passed. The new is here. There's newness in us to represent that change in our spiritual DNA. So the first step in understanding the core and how we live out our life is to understand that we are new, that we are different that the old has gone and the new has come and that newness is in Jesus Christ. And so once we understand that, then the scripture, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, make more sense to us. It's the action of what we are to do, how we are to live out this newness and this discovery of this amazing um, DNA that is written in our soul. So I'm going to read from Matthew. Um, it says, and this is going to be very familiar to you. So I'm going to be reading from Matthew, and this is going to be a very familiar text to you. It says this, and starting in verse 18, 28, 18. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the thing that I wanna point out in this scripture Therefore, go. And there's this thing about going. Like I have come, I, I, I went, right, on vacation to Oak Island. So we plan to go on vacation and we plan to go back from vacation, to come back from vacation. We go to the store, right? There are trips that we take, we go, but that's not the go that it's talking about. And I think that we get really confused on this go. We think we have to go do something and then that's done and then we come back. That's kind of the point I'm making here. But this going is as you are going. So think about it if it said, therefore, as you are going, as you are going about your daily life, as you are going on vacation, as you are going to the store, as you are going about your day in and day out life, make disciples. It has a whole different meaning. So as we go, because we have this new DNA and this new relationship in Christ, we have been given this strength and this power that as we are going about our life, we have an opportunity to make other people follow Christ too, to make disciples, if you will, to live our life in such a way that it is radiating the light of Christ. It is radiating the love of Christ. It is radiating the kingdom of God on earth. That is our goal. That is the core of what it means to be a Christian and be Part of a local church that is at the center, that we have a desire in us for other people to experience this adoption, 
in this new birth, in this new creation, in this new way of living life that is so much better than anything else that you could ever think, imagine, or dream of. This is our job as Christians. It is the core of who we are. I just cannot say that enough. And as we go, what we then do is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we are teaching others how to treat one another. We are teaching others this goodness that can come in our life. Now, I believe in my heart of hearts that we have not done a very good job at all of Matthew 28. I think we've slacked. I think that we are fearful to share Jesus. And I think that we see so much negativity in the world, on social media, on news channels, that somehow that gets into our soul. And we just kind of like, I don't know, we lose some joy or, or we lose some passion or purpose. Now, I experienced that very thing that I'm talking about just this week, just a simple example of how me and my children failed to be a light for Christ, how we failed to be what we have been called to be. And we're all going to fail from time to time, but it's just a good example for you. So we were on the beach and um, it's a new beach. We're not familiar with this beach at all. We're used to going to Holden and we're at Oak Island and all of that. So we're down on this beach and um, and a family came down and put their stuff down kind of, well, six feet from us. And um, it was several teenage boys and girls and mom and dad. And all the teenage boys got up and they started throwing the football and they were in front of us and they were smack talking and just, I don't know, they were talking about everybody. And we were all being really judgy going, I don't, I don't even want to be here. I mean, it was so bad we left. We left the beach and we came back, had some lunch, and then decided to go to the pool. Well, when we got to the pool, guess who was at the pool? The same family. Are you kidding? It was the same family. So we went out and we sat down and we still were really judgy. Well, the dad came out and I remembered on Sunday afternoon, when I got here, that the dad was out at his car and I had a brief conversation with him and we went on. And so I recognized him. And so some of the kids started to go inside their condo. Um, I just said to the, to the dad, I said, hey, did they ever come fix your elevator? And he said, they're working on it now, yours is next. Yes, our elevator was broken. So I struck up a conversation. And I said, so you guys here all week? Yes, we're here all week. Where are you from? He said, North Carolina. I said, oh, what's too? What part of Carolina? He said, Hickory. And well, how about you? Uh, small talk. I said, oh, we're in Charlotte. And then he said, but I grew up in Mooresville. Emma and I looked at each other and looked at him and said, really? We lived in Mooresville. And he said, yeah, I grew up in Mooresville. Why were you there? I said, well, my husband is a Methodist pastor. And he was the pastor at Vanderburg United Methodist Church. And the man went, that's my home church. I cannot make this up. That's my home church. I grew up in that church. I said, you've got to be kidding. And he said, yeah. So we started talking about when Tommy served there and when he left and moved away. And he said, yeah, do you know Gary Miller? And I just about fell in the floor. I said, excuse me? And he asked me again, and I said, I worked with Gary Miller for seven years at Rocky Mount. I'm a pastor too. And he said, Gary Miller is my first cousin. Do you see how God works even in our judgment if we let him? In that moment, God took over, not Andy. And somehow light shined in darkness. Somehow, this kingdom of God came to life because our attitudes about one another changed and we felt like we could connect with another human being that we had no idea 
So I proceeded to do what I do. I took a selfie and sent it to Gary. And and now every time I see this gentleman when we're on the beach or at the pool, I can see friends. I can see someone that I'm connected to. Now there's more to this story. There's this one, one, one young boy who was worse than all the others. And we couldn't figure out if he was the man's son, he and his wife's son, or if it was a friend. But what I found out was this, the one young man who was so rude and obnoxious just found out that a week earlier he lost his dad. His dad died. He was acting out from his pain. And as soon as we found that out, the kids and I looked at each other and went, oh, and we were able to cut him some slack. See, this is how simple life can be. That is such a simple story, but it's a true story where my own human flesh was all judgy and discounting and pushing people away. It wasn't being a light for Christ, but somehow God worked it out and I was able to walk into that light, walk into that space. And this whole new dynamic took over. That is what I believe as we are going means. As we are going, be open to what God is doing. As we are going, try and put yourself in someone else's shoes, even in your judgments. Rather than close the door forever, maybe we could be open to what God is doing and how God is moving. I had the same experience last Saturday at our prayer service, our prayer circle. As Sandy came and said, Andy, do you think our church will come and pray for all the looting and protesting and the killing of the latest black man um, for really doing nothing by, I guess, a really bad police officer and the unrest that it caused? And I'm like, let's do this. And I've never done it before, but God showed up. And we were able to be a light for the people who were driving by, whether they realized it or not. They saw people on their knees with their hands raised and others surrounding them. What are you doing to be a light? What are you willing to kind of let down or let, let your guard down to live out what it means? to be a Christian, that's the core of who we are. And it's not just being nice, that's part of it. But we're teaching people a better way. Now you and I may not be the type of people that sit down and go, let me tell you about Jesus. But we could be, it could lead to that. We can say, I'm very active in my local church. And at my local church, we do love. We don't do judgment. And at my local church, we do acceptance. We don't turn people away, no matter what. You should come give it a try. We can say to people, do you know Jesus? Let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. And it's such a better life. It can change your DNA. It can change who you are. It can change the trajectory of the rest of your life in an instant. The core of who we are as a local church, we are people that as you go, you do your best and you look for those moments to try and be a light for the kingdom of God. Go in peace. Amen.